testing like a pilot basically today for a new show. Steve, whenever you're ready, my guy. Hey, what's up, guys? This is uh, Stevie One Chain. Today we're here at 8th Ave and 26th Street. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to start a new show. All it is, we're going to call it Around the Block. We're going to pick a random street in New York City. We're going to walk around the block once, see what the fuck is up with everybody. Come on, let's go. See, like, for the most part, people in New York City, they don't give a shit what you're doing. So you could literally, like, walk down the street. We have cameras and nobody really cares. So we're going to try and, like, talk to some people, see what's up. Let's see what you can do. That's one. Do two. Do two. Do two. Do two. Oh, my man. Oh, man. There we go. Where do you work? Oh, Tempur-Pedic. Max, they got Tempur-Pedic. They got Tempur-Pedic here. Gonna, we're going to wrap it up for this episode this week of Once Around the Block with Stevie One Chain. Hopefully, we're going to do 100 million more of these. So uh, we'll go all over the city. We'll go all, all, all over the place. Uh, thanks for watching. And we'll get you on the next block. You gotta start at 10 though. Eight fresh ones. He didn't break any of the other ones. Oh, one. they're all fresh. <laughs> they're all fresh. No, there were some cracks going on. You gotta start with 10 though Wait, and then work your way down. There were some Caroline fractures in these? I don't know. He said he could break eight. He could eat 100 nuggets. You take allegedly. 10 and try. He could break eight, right. allegedly. Oh, 10 is fucking hard. Yeah. Also, please don't leave her. Also, please no, don't leave her. No. no. All right, all right, yeah, all right. Me, all right. Like no. I'm going to take two off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Still, still no. I feel like you should do three more attempts with the 10 to really wear your hands. Still hand no chance. Hands. No chance. Yeah, this eight, eight semen. Did he say semen? Semen. <laughs> eight semen. Pretty sure he said uh, semen. Right. Yeah, no, eight is out. I'm, right. I'm over it. Came in here like a big shot. You got to yeah. at least do five. Oh, you want to try eight, right. sir? I cannot do eight. Three, four, yeah. eight, five, six. Imagine I do. How pissed would you be if I got eight? If you can break these, you are the strongest, most manly, most machismo man in the whole office. But still, I think six is doable though. No. Good grunt though. No, you would think grunting would help. Steve, you gonna go for it? Yeah, I'll go eight. I'm just gonna picture someone you hate. It hurts. Catching <laughs> fuel, breaking fuel, breaking fuel, breaking fuel. I'm the strongest man alive. I'm the strongest man alive. Three, two, one. Motherfucker! No. <laughs> There's no fucking way. Fuck. Motherfucker. <laughs> I can't grunt. I'm almost there. Fuck! Your mother's tits. Fuck! I'm out. In America, these are in America, pencils. we make pencil, we make pencils just to break them. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking, we waste. That's what we do here. It's the most American thing One. he's done since he's been here. Break pencil this. me. Give me a fall. Used to be a high school quarterback. That was easy. Can you break it on your head now? No. Say on your head. You break a pencil on your head. No. Why not? Hey, hey! Two, two, two. Two. Two's hard. You can like, do it. You can do two. Come on. <laughs> three, three, three. Three, or do we jump to four? I don't know if you jumped to four. That one hurt a little bit. Okay, three. Come on. Come on. <laughs> All 
All right, we only have four left, so let's go. I feel like Here breaking on your head is, is easy because your head is hard, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> 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 ah. Shit, now I gotta get four. Oh, shit. One more shot. Here's a mess. Shirt's too tight. Fat as shit. Weak. When's the CTE gonna start setting in? Not from pencils, guy, come on. All right, clean this up. Oh, fuck you. Hello, hello. Um, so fortunately for y'all, this is not a video about fantasy football. This is a video about TikTok. Cue everybody closing this video. Um, from a business perspective, because we've had a uh, an interesting phenomenon take place here within the BDGE corridors in relation to TikTok. And I'd like to get my thoughts, feelings about it out, which I haven't really had time to think about it and like self-reflect on uh, what we're going through right now as a company as it relates to this platform. One of, and I have a meeting in 14 minutes about our NFT project dropping this summer. Which can be fucking very cool for y'all. I get the question a lot. You know, how do I break through in fantasy football? All I want to do is make videos. All I want to do is cover football in the NFL and sports, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And most of the time it comes from people who have not created content whatsoever. Right. And it's it's always cyclical. It's always you see what's out there that becomes what you know, and that becomes what you think you need to do. So 20 years ago, everybody saw Matt Berry writing. You had to become a writer. 10 years after that, you know, they, they were bloggers, whatever, right? They became bloggers. You thought you had to do that in order to become the next fantasy football personality or whatever. Then podcasts became a thing. And then, you know, YouTube became a thing. And the point I'm making is most of the people that reach out to me see what I'm doing. If they're inspired by what we're doing here, the likelihood of, of them trying to break through is that they, they see what we do and they say, hey, I have to do the same thing. How do I get to what you're doing? And my advice is always like you don't get to where you want to go by doing really what you think you need to be doing. You need to be a step ahead. You need to be doing what the next breakthrough thing is. It took me five years to get to where I am on YouTube. By the time you put in the work I did on YouTube, one – the juice is already squeezed out, but two, YouTube's going to be even harder to break through. So it's like you, you're you're playing from behind, right? The race started yesterday, and you're and you think you could walk the first lap if you started today. It's just not how it works anymore. So my piece of advice that I give to anyone that reaches out to me in the year of our Lord, 2022, is always the same thing. If I started right now, if I started today, the only platform I'd be making content on would be TikTok. It would be the only one. It's the only one that has any sort of organic reach on there that you can grow, right? Like one in a million people, you might pop off on Twitter or on YouTube or via podcasting, but it is so fucking saturated and so hard to do it. So my advice is always do it on TikTok because that's where you'll actually be able to grow an audience by putting in the same amount of work that everybody else puts in on YouTube and via blogs, via podcasts or whatever. Uh, TikTok had been a tough platform for me to put out content at a high volume prior to us moving into the office because we already had our, what I like to call leverage point. Every creator, every media brand, anyone who's trying to grow an audience through social media needs to find their leverage point. And by leverage point, I mean, what platform have you grown your audience on, right? Like our leverage point, very clearly YouTube. Okay. Once you find your leverage point, you milk the shit out of that. You grow it and you grow it and you fucking grow it because you have an advantage. The bigger YouTube channel you have, the easier it is for you to get more and more and more views on your shit, okay? Even if your stuff is just as good as someone with 8% as many followers, 8% the size of the audience, that platform naturally pushes your shit to a lot more people. You have your leverage point. We have it on YouTube. The Insta Thoughts from 10 years ago had it on Instagram. They hit it and hit it and hit it and hit it and hit it over and over again and got as much as they could out of it from it. Every creator, every media brand should be searching for their leverage points. You hear a lot like, 
You should be everywhere and you should to the best of your ability. But most individuals, most brands don't have the capability. They don't have the manpower. They don't have just the, the people and the, and the horsepower really to get that shit out there at a high volume at scale all over the place. So you do the best you can at finding what your leverage point is. And if you have extra energy, extra time, extra people that you could sink into other platforms, that's when you do so. But you milk the platform that you hit it biggest earliest the most okay the only one worth doing it to right now is tiktok so when we got in these walls one of the first things i said was we are focusing on youtube and we are focusing on tiktok and almost nothing else twitter's fun but it's not one that we're actively looking to grow on same thing with instagram podcasting we just stripped the audio from the videos and upload it as a podcast those are all there as secondary devices the only platforms that we literally put time and focus and energy into making content for is youtube and tiktok I was not able to do the TikTok thing before we got into the office walls. We are now able to do that. We have like multiple people working on TikTok videos around the clock. And that strategy has paid off in a very fucking weird way. And I'm trying to figure out what the next steps are for us to move forward with it. Some of you guys have probably seen us guessing Ike's lunch, either in the vlogs or on Twitter or on Instagram, but you're not on, uh, you're not on TikTok. It's literally, we go around the office and each person guesses what Ike, our editor, is going to order for lunch that day. And it just turned into a little bit of a game. And then one day last week, it was actually the last vlog that we did last Thursday. It was Cinco de Mayo. We were live streaming at the time. Some of you guys were in there mock drafting with us. And Ike was in the in the bike producing. And he was like, fuck it. I'm going to order lunch right now. Why don't you guys just guess live on stream? So we were like, cool. We're already at the couch. We could just get the video from YouTube afterwards of the live stream, chop it up, make it into a podcast, a little mini podcast for TikTok, and we'll do Ike's Lunch that way just for a day. We did it that way. The first video we put up in that format got six-figure views. The first, I think it was day 26 or day 27. So if you go to TikTok and you scroll down to day 27 of Guessing Ike's Lunch, it's the first one with us at the couch, Guessing Ike's Lunch. And it blew up. And we were like, whoa, there's something here. I don't know what exactly it is. I don't know if it's the Ike's lunch. That was the day that I guessed it correctly. I am i don't know where the receipt is. I want to frame it. I want to send it into PSA and get it fucking graded and hang it with me on a chain. But I think I fucking lost it. I'm devastated. However, however, it blew up. And ever since then, every single one of the Ike's lunch videos we put up on TikTok basically get a half a million views. 500,000. The one we put up yesterday which is probably the best episode we've had yet. When we put up yesterday, this was one day ago, day 34 of Guessing Ike's Lunch has 777,000 views. All right, day 34, Guessing Ike's Lunch. And I'm gonna go with something that it's burned me in the past. It's burned a lot of us in the past, but I think Ike is starting to feel the heat from all this crappy lunch he's been getting. Dude, he's so about to do he's it. He's gotta go with something healthy and it's called sweet green. It's yes. been twenty days since he's gotten something healthy. Exactly. So bad. We looked at the numbers we ran. I actually created my own proprietary algorithm this morning. On day five, Ike got stickies. Eleven days later, he got stickies. Nine days after that, he got stickies. If you're doing the math here, I know you guys are not math guys. Every 10 days, on average, he gets stickies. The last time he got stickies, 10 days ago. Wow. Stickies. But we also know he ordered it online and is now picking it up. He That's said it's going to take 10 to 20 minutes for the pickup. I went on DoorDash, 13 minutes right now for stickies. Pickup. This is like film versus analytics. Like, analytics say that's a good guess. Film is like, no. The heat is on Ike. He's feeling the pressure. <laughs> the train is coming in hot. The light at the end of the tunnel is getting near. We're going with Don's today. 100 nuggets. I can feel it. Bro, you steal, you steal my, my line. <laughs> what did I say? You said the heat is on. I said he's feeling the heat. Did I re really? He did. There's no heat on Ike today. He's cool as a cucumber. He's getting five guys. It's not very far away, but he's still going to order online and pick it up. Close enough for that. Better than sticky guys. Better than stickies. I tried to sneak in here before we could set up the camera. Insane. No fucking chance he got done. Are you out of your fucking? Oh, you you bitch! You not done, bitch! I can't believe you did that to everyone. It's not. <laughs> I knew you were doing Keep it. I the saw pressure the fucking... on. He's close to breaking. I know he's close to fucking ah, I breaking. I saw the smile. That's that's a fucking the, that's a plot twist of the century. <laughs> it has its own cult following at this point. We just put up a TikTok fifty-seven minutes ago about the highest paid athletes under the age of 25. 
57 minutes ago, it has 53,000 views. That's the type of organic reach that you're not finding on other platforms. So Ike's Lunch has taken on a like a whole explosive portion of what we're doing of its own. And it's honestly reinvigorated a lot of the office. Like we're excited about it. It's become a main piece of content for us that we don't miss. We figure out a way to make it happen each day, day in and day out. And it's 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 a weird inflection point for me personally because we went from basically 5,000 followers, I want to say, on TikTok when we first started doing the new version of Ike's Lunch. We have 55,000. That came in about 10 to 12 days, 50,000 followers in 10 to 12 days on TikTok. That's the type of explosive power that TikTok has. My concern is this, like I would take, I would take, I would probably take 50,000 YouTube subscribers over a million. Yeah, that's, that's easy. I would probably take 10,000, 20,000 subscribers on YouTube over a million followers on TikTok any day in terms of if you're running a business, it depends on what your goals are. You guys as customers and as an audience, just being in terms of like loyalty are exponentially more valuable than people on TikTok. So what I want to do, we're, we're relatively new to TikTok and it's easy to see those types of numbers and being like, oh, we could turn that into money. One of the things I've observed as, as someone who's grown a social media presence and also tried to operate it as much as a business as possible is that the earlier you try to monetize something the quicker you ruin the leverage that you have with your audience. So <clears throat> this is going to be a completely different type of monetization that we try to have on TikTok. It's not going to be, you know, selling you guys draft guides, or maybe it will be in the summer if we're putting out more fantasy football content. That's like clips from, from my YouTube videos and stuff. And we could try to, we could try to leverage that. But TikTok right now for us is more of like an entertainment value where we've always taken you guys under the hood and given you like information value. Right, informational value is basically like if you can bring someone onto a video, onto a piece of content, and teach them something, information that they did not know prior to coming into the video, and they leave with new information, that is exactly what informational value is. If they come in with a certain opinion, and by the time they finish your content, they have, you know, maybe not a differing opinion, maybe they don't switch to the opinion that you gave them, but you gave them something to think about, and they start to, you know, question their original opinion also informational value. That's the type of shit we've always hammered home to you guys. And it's built a very loyal audience from you guys. On TikTok, everything is very quick hitting. Everything is very shallow, but we're going in a much more entertainment direction with the value we're giving off, which I've talked about this ad nauseum over the years, like depending on what type of value you're giving to your audience, the way you monetize the audience is going to be different. And I could already see it forming. It's basically what I've always said. I've always thought like, if you're an entertainment value type brand or person or social media person, whatever, the way that you monetize that is in-person events. Like if you're a funny ass dude, you start doing comedy shows around the country. If you're a brand like Barstool, merch. They sell millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of merch or advertisements within their content throughout the year. They don't sell rookie draft guides. They don't sell fantasy draft guides because people, you know, they take them seriously, obviously, but they come to laugh. So they want to support you guys in like a way that feels more community driven. And that's the type of audience we're building on TikTok. But it's weird for me because that's so different. Like we're about to have more followers on TikTok over in a one month span, in a one month run, we're going to have over 70, 70,000 followers on TikTok. We'll probably have it maybe nah, not by the time you guys see this, but I, honestly, the rate we're going possibly, we're going to have more followers on TikTok than we have on YouTube. And it took me six to seven years to build this YouTube audience but it's going to take us five to six, six to seven fucking weeks to build that TikTok audience. Obviously, the quicker you go up, the quicker you can fall down, which is why I'm always hesitant to, to make business moves on something that's happening organically. It feels like we, don't, we didn't earn the right to start monetizing. But if you've been following Ike's Lunch and like the little intricacies within it, there are opportunities there. Like, for instance, if you go on any of those videos, Tony guesses Don's every day. He gets a McDonald's. He hits him with a fucking Don's, right? And it's become a little bit of a cult following within the comment section. We put up that video and you could scroll through and there will be at least 100 comments every single fucking day that just has Don's on it. They love it. The people fucking love it. I don't understand what they love about this. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Piece of shit content, but it fucking works. Everything about it. TikTok is just the perfect platform for it. So there becomes this little cult following for it. And it tells me that there's an opportunity there. If one day, if one day, and we don't even have to push it. 
Like what will happen is he keeps guessing Don's and that motherfucker didn't guess Don's today at lunch. It kind of destroyed the streak he had, but the come bike can't listen. You can't come bike if you don't fall off. It's one thing I've learned. One day he whips out a shirt that just says Don's on it, like fucking Don's right across the middle. We're going to have uh, those 100 Don's comments are going to turn into where do I get that Don's shirt comments turns into 80 sales turns into $5,000 worth of revenue for the company, right? Like those are the things I'm thinking about when it comes to TikTok. But again, we're so early in the process that trying to monetize anything that's not completely organic to what we're already doing is a reach and will destroy us on TikTok. So I would I would like for us to stay out of monetizing on TikTok for as long as fucking possible because we're building up leverage. We This is the first time in our existence that we're building up multiple leverage points, both YouTube and TikTok. And that gives you a lot of leverage as a fucking brand because now we can pull in sponsorship deals from TikTok. We can pull them in from YouTube. We can harness the power of both of them and promise more eyeballs for advertisers, et cetera. But it also gives us more leverage with the audience, like more things that we could do, more engagement, more like merchandise we can now sell more of, uh, you know, we could do more live meetups and shit like that. And it gives us a new demographic of a lot of younger kids, which, you know, will eventually funnel into the, to- uh, the, the other stuff that we sell. So a lot of crazy opportunity within TikTok right now. And we're going through it together. Like we're all really energized about it. It's pretty fun to watch and, and feel within the office of, of how this has kind of taken on a life of its own. And it was definitely something that we needed because as I talked about in the last vlog, like YouTube had always kind of seemed like, you know, my thing where it was just like my thing and I gave them an opportunity to do it. But if you go on our TikTok, it's all of us doing it together. Like I am, if we have six people making content on TikTok, I am legitimately 15 to 20% of the content on there. Um, so it's the first time that we're building something together that doesn't rely on me whatsoever in order to make it happen. So um, it's exciting. It's also three o'clock. I need to be on a call right now. So I hope you enjoyed a little, a little business. A little business one on one. I would honestly riff for another twenty minutes if I could, but I have to have to go. Ike needs to edit this for tomorrow. I am leaving for Florida tonight, so I will be butt naked by a pool with a margarita in hand by the time y'all watch this tomorrow. Girl. Yeah.